welcome to the Play 21 Mini Let's Plays. And today we have with us Martin Cheplis from Latvia with his game Space Rack. Welcome. Welcome. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, very glad to have you. So for an introduction, I prepared some little sentences uh, you can try to complete. And uh, if you're ready, we can start. Mm, go. All right. So first question, what did you drink this morning? Milk. Great. Um, your, my main occupation is? From the uh, developer. OK. <laughs> I would describe myself as? Uh, game. Okay. My superpower is? Walking a lot. Uh, okay, this could be hard in the current timing. Uh, let's see. Um, the thing I'm holding in my hand most of the time is? A dog's leash. Ah, okay. I can see where this is going. Um, so, during the pandemic, I... I spent a lot of time in the woods. Mm, okay. <laughs> and after the pandemic, I will... Definitely visit some countries. Go somewhere. Nice. Okay, so uh, last two questions. I'm creating interactive works because... I think there is untapped potential. Mm -hmm. And the future of games will be? Very exciting and interactive. Ah, uh, yes. I'm also looking forward to new ways to interact with games in the future. This will be great. So how did I do? Uh, perfect. Uh, so <laughs> it's just a short warm up. Uh, you did very fine. And let's switch to the game. All right. OK. So. I can open it up here. Let's see. Space Rack, there it is. And I'm just starting a new demo, I think. Let's see how it starts. Yeah, and it starts off uh, with it's unforgiving. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's important, yeah. Because uh, this is game where combat is optional. That's, that's one of the main things about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, wh what's the game about? So you are like a newbie captain, it's your first journey, and you get to get attacked by pirates, by space pirates. And uh, you have to repair the ship, and you happen to, have to be in the space junk, junk field, like lots of uh, derelict stations and spaceships where you can try to find um, the fuel chip you need. Ah. Okay, let's jump right into it. Mm, the first expression I uh, had was that it um, there's a lot of dedication, and it's maybe inspired by some older titles. Oh yeah, it's it's inspired by Fallout, by Arcanum, by like these games, these role playing games of nineties. Mm -hmm. For for me, only at first it seems quite uh, similar, uh, but after playing for a while, you notice that there are lots of interesting things. Not just the the very unique style, but also some very unique mechanics in there. Uh, which are amazing. And uh, where would you say, um, yeah, that you came up with some uh, other ideas? Yeah, we, we tried to push uh, the genre a bit further. So we, like, as usually uh, great artists do, we still, we stole some ideas from the, the, the Fallout games, but then we started to add things. And at this moment, uh, Space Rec has features I haven't seen in other games. I don't say it's a good thing. I just it happens to be so. Yeah, and uh, just right here, I can uh, choose at the starting agenda, and I found it quite interesting that you attached some stats for it. I mean, you have uh, three genders here, or well, two and neutral. Um, but did you have some discussions about what what kind of stats you uh, tie to those? Yeah, this is very important, actually. Yes, uh, the gender thing, it's very important in the game because, it, well, first of all, it, of course, affects your character, but it also is the thing that is uh, checked on multiple uh, occasions. For example, there are quests that you cannot complete as one or another gender. Mm, okay. Yeah. 
is completely something else. Uh, you have low focus. That's why you like you kind of disregard long texts. That's what happens in the game. It's like, um, yeah, you know how it is sometimes in these uh, RPG games. Lots of lore dumps. Uh, we, if you have a low focus stat, that's they turn into gibberish. It's pretty cool that these stats can influence your perception. It's it, it, it's these quirks. It's like these small things that uh, that uh, make or like this is the game actually. Like that's that that's one of these uh, standout features we have. Okay, so here we just uh, landed, and uh, our initial goal is to to repair something, right? To get something. Fuel chip. Right, the, the fuel chip. Okay, so we have to find that. Yeah, well, you need the fuel in this demo. Uh, yeah, like the, the overarching quest about fuel chip, but this demo is about actually getting also the fuel. It's complicated then. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, this is a quest uh, quite uh, often encountered in games. And uh, what I found pretty interesting is that, of course, the world is way bigger and it's a very small yeah. quest at the start. So my question would be, how do you push players into this open world that they can see their freedom? How important is this quest and how do you guide players through it? Yeah, yeah, it's a very good question because uh, actually the game is structured so that um, while there are lots of side quests, uh, it is actually most of the time it will be guiding you in uh, on your main uh, objective. So uh, we have this one main objective, but we have like like many many paths to reach it, and uh, each of those paths can be like uh, like a, like a, each own sub quest. Uh, and um, and experience uh, can be very very different. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and as we just could see here, I had to do a skill check to have a little bit better perception, can read her uh, personality. So um, yeah, there are lots of different paths apparently to go to this story, and uh, for, for me it would be interesting to learn how you approach this freedom, how much of things you can do so that it still fits in the story you want to tell at the end. So, um, yeah, tell us about freedom. Like, that's very paramount. Like, um, we have a very, very, um, basically, we are inching closer to the immersive sim. Uh, the freedom, like, players can do anything. You can kill anybody you meet and still complete the game. You cannot, you can ignore anybody and still complete the game. You can fail every, every skill check and still complete the game because there are like many, many options and you are free to do whatever. And we don't have like uh, any like preset path for you. Like there are quests that like uh, like guide you or something, but, but uh, if you want to do something, you can do it. And in the demo, it's actually a fine example. Like, uh, like uh, we don't tell you to do something, but you can do some crazy stuff there. Cool. Is there an example you can give for something crazy? Yeah. Well, it's uh, not. It's not a, really a spoiler, but uh, like when you arrive, you can see a huge ship on the side. Like we don't tell you to do anything, but it, it's like it, you presume it's part of the like scenery and uh, nobody allows you on it but you can totally steal that ship and that ship has fuel chip uh, fuel as well so uh, if the player figures it out or just like tinkers around it and uh, accidentally like uh, there's a full interior there are full characters you never meet if you don't uh, try that path if you don't lock the door if you don't try to kill the guards and something like we kind of um, uh, we the bard player for exploring and trying out and just uh, off the beaten path. And there are a lot of uh, characters who can help you on your journey, or maybe some who don't want to help you very, uh, very much. Uh, but how do you come up with uh, shaping this society in your game? Uh, like, is there a ratio for helpful, not so helpful characters? Uh, how do you write them, uh, defections, the characters? What, what's behind the society? I try to like imagine how it would be like um, how would I feel like if I was like left there for 20 years 
stuck on some uh, station and I based on that uh, and the individual like ambitions and needs for the character they are either helpful or not it's uh, like it sort of comes naturally just based on their uh, like uh, background with the situation they are in it's like uh, there's no quota it's like does it make sense for them to be hostile or helpful is it their character is like like personality like that for example you just uh, spoke with a uh, first character there she's like like sort of uh, adventurer lady and uh, she's inclined to like to be more helpful than uh, somebody else and with this is there something uh, you want to experience for players uh, something they take out of it after playing the game um, maybe there's a, a message you want to send yeah well uh i really appreciate uh, this gameplay of these older rpgs because they when i was younger like well a kid even uh, i was blown away by the things that oh i didn't know i can do that and i wanted i wanted to get this feeling with this demo with this game I just oh like the player plays it and i didn't know i can do that i didn't know i can use the space toilet you can totally <laughs> and uh, so uh and uh, like uh, like my best hope is like two players play the same game they meet they talk, and they both wow i didn't know i can do that they have both this different experience so that would uh that's what i would like uh, for players to take away from this demo like your own playthrough it's pretty cool that that is uh, one of the thoughts behind it that people can exchange their experiences afterward how they go to the story what their story is Hmm. Okay, so the countdown already run out and uh, we have uh, one question left and uh, that is uh, what would you say is more true that games are shaping or influencing society or that they are a reflection of our society? Well, like obviously both. Uh, it's like uh, uh, you create society and then that society like like changes you I, I think that's that's the case here uh that uh games are created by society by this like uh zeitgeist this moment this this uh situation but once they are created they start to influence the size society like building on top of it so i guess this is the case here where uh you take something and then uh it in turn changes something around you like oh, wow um, this is a great uh, wrap-up statement. Thank you for that. Thank you for being here in this short mini Let's Play. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, many people will play the game in the uh, Play Valley here and uh, vote for it for the Audience Award, of course. Um, and uh, I also heard uh, right now we have the demo, but there are some things in the work, right? So there, there are com some things coming up. Yes, uh, we are like we are uh, gearing up for full release. Uh, we are, you can play the demo right now, and we keep updating it because uh, it's it's like early access demo. It's free, but we keep updating it so we can test out uh, new new mechanics, new 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 changes, and uh, so uh, yeah, we, we are trying to polish it uh, before the release. Right. So you should definitely finish. Yes. You should play it in the uh, Play Valley here and then compare your experiences you had. Uh, look out for the demo updates. And yeah, thanks for being here with us and see you at the festival. Thanks for having me. Bye bye. Bye.